Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm so sorry it's been a few weeks since I uploaded, but today I'm super excited because we have hill workouts. Oh man, I love hill workouts. So I brought you guys here to my favorite hill in Taipei. Uh, no, not that. It's, uh, it's this hill, you go up and then it actually, it keeps going up to the very top and there's a really famous hotel right up there. See, that's the Grand Hotel Taipei. So today I'm trying to cover every aspect of hill running and I broke it up into three kind of main branches or concepts. The first one is going to be how you can use hill running as a means to like improve mechanics. So running mechanics will include like muscle power and explosiveness, uh, stride turnover or frequency, stride length, knee lift, like those kinds of things. The second branch or concept will cover how to use hills as a means to replace a workout. So instead of doing a tempo workout or a track workout, you could actually use a hill as a solid hard workout day. And the third branch will cover how to use hills to prepare specifically for a race. So maybe your race is like the Boston Marathon, which has those infamous like undulating hills. Maybe you're an ultra marathoner and your whole race is like running up a mountain or down a mountain. You need to get your body used to being efficient at going up and down the hills. So those three concepts. Like a like a three minute break. So those are short, fast, high intensity hill sprints. 10 to 15 seconds, maximal effort up a moderately steep incline, like five to 10%, all out max effort, but with perfect form. So what these are gonna work on is your, your max power, your explosiveness, directly translated to your running. It's gonna be your knee lift. You're gonna have more pop and a quicker step off the ground because there's a lot of torque on the Achilles and the calf. It's also gonna heavily target your quads and your glutes. Quads and your glutes. And when you translate those little adaptations to flat running performance, it's really gonna help with your acceleration. So think of yourself in a race and you're chasing somebody. It's that little boost to get around them. That's what, the, that's what hill sprints like this are really going to kind of help you to be able to do a little bit better. So really quick burst acceleration, really nice. I totally love the training effect of doing these. So these are really fun to do and they make you feel really powerful and really strong. But what's really important is that you take a full recovery after each rep. You're going maximal effort here. So you need to allow your, your muscles time to kind of regenerate the metabolites needed to produce that maximal force. So we have like these really big type 2A, type 2X muscle fibers that are those, those fast twitch muscle fibers. To activate those, you have to put on maximal intensity. And then that, that means your phosphocreatine stores and your muscle ATP have to kind of be ready to go. So it takes about three minutes for that to regenerate or kind of come back into the muscle tissue so that you can continuously produce that same amount of effort to tap into those big muscle fibers. When you think of like Olympic weightlifters, they're throwing those huge weights over their head and it's this massive amount of power and explosiveness. This is 150 kilos. We're already beyond the range of what an American this body weight could do. Very easy power snatch. As I say, this is beyond what any American could full snatch, full squat snatch. But that only lasts for like five to 10 seconds, right? And during their training, they might actually even take like a five minute rest between each rep they do to ensure that they can adequately produce the, um, that required amount of force. So we're touching on muscle strength and muscle power, but also there's like neuromuscular adaptations too. And you have to make sure you recover. So I would say start out with six reps of this and yeah that means you're gonna have 18 minutes of rest that's okay our goal here is to train explosiveness so you want to make sure you're fully recovered and rested so that you can be explosive each time so let's say start out with six reps and they're awesome to throw in after a workout so maybe you just did a tempo or you just did a long run or you just did a track workout find, find an awesome nice little steepish hill near where you live and throw like six of these in at the end um, it's a great way to finish a workout feeling fast and strong and some of the running theory says that if you if you can produce this kind of force when you're already fatigued, it could help translate to doing the same thing in a race. So yeah, so think of these as replacing like a 
like a heavy squat workout or a jumping squat workout. That's kind of where you'd want to stick a workout like this into. Uh, so the tail end is something for the grade five to 10%. As you get steeper, what happens is you, you can go steeper, but then you're kind of, uh, the steeper you go, the less you're mimicking the actual running motion on flat land. It's more of like a, like a stair climb or a hill climb, which is fine. But if your races run mostly flat, then it doesn't make sense to kind of practice um, activating the muscles in that kind of that fashion to where it's like really steep, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so on the flip side of those uphill sprints are downhill sprints. So downhill runs, I, I love downhill running. They're so much fun, but I have like a love-hate relationship with them. Cause I don't know, for whatever reason, like a few days later or a week later after doing like a nice intense downhill running session, I'll get some goofy injury that pops up like a, like a shin splint or some weird thing in like a knee or something like that. Because when you run downhill, especially if it's on asphalt, there's a lot of extra force that comes, more so than running on flat ground. So when you run flat ground, you have you know normal force. When you run uphill, there's a little bit less force, impact force, and when you run downhill, there's, there's more impact force than if you're running on flat ground. So, I don't know, like I love putting these in a workout because they'll help increase your stride turnover and they'll also really help work on your stride length because as you're running downhill, you're gonna naturally have a longer stride and your neuromuscular system is gonna have this awesome adaptation. It's basically like, hey, you know, my, my legs are going a little longer, a little further each stride than usual, but I'm, I think I'm okay with that. And that's like, and after you do like eight or nine of them, it feels like really comfortable going downhill at pace, which is really cool, I think. And then a lot of times it'll carry over into uh, when you're running on flatland. So I would say just be careful with these. Try to find a soft surface if you can, but primarily don't go on too steep of a decline. I would say max like 5%. You want a really slight, a really slight decline, nothing too extreme. Cause again, there's gonna be more force. And this way you can really focus on your form. As you're going downhill on these, you wanna focus on pumping your arms really fast. If you watched this video, we talked about how your arm swing can, can influence your turnover. And on downhills, you really wanna make sure that your turnover is nice and quick because what you don't wanna do when you're going downhill, if when you're doing these in training, is lean back and break with your heel. That's, we don't, we don't wanna train that. We wanna lean forward, have your torso over top of your hips and try and have your feet land directly underneath your hips as well. It's gonna feel a little weird and a little terrifying depending on how steep the hill is by like leaning forward into the hill instead of backwards to break yourself. But that's what we're training. That's why I say pick a very slight decline, 5% maybe, just deep enough to be like, oh, I'm moving a little faster than normal. Pump your arms, keep your arms nice and close, pump your arms a bit, and then really try and keep your legs moving quickly and laying underneath of your hips. And then focus on just keeping a nice, relaxed, fluid stride. Some keys I've always heard are like, don't fight the hill, breaking it, going down. Relax, relax into the hill. Don't sprint down it, just kind of let your legs take you down, let your turnover take you down. And relax, go with gravity, don't push against it, or whatever that means. And as you relax and you lean down into the hill, your legs will start to get used to going a little further and a little faster. Um, and you might have some really cool adaptations. Again, not too many reps, six reps. Take a good bit of recovery between each. You could throw these in after you do like your six hard max effort um, power hill sprints. So, you know, you do your, your tempo, do six, do six of those fast ones uphill, and then you could throw these in at the end. Just to see, just for funsies. Be careful, don't overdo it. Um, again, there's gonna be a lot more force going down. These downhill runs are gonna be working on the kind of like neuromuscular adaptations. So basically your, your body, your brain learning to go a little faster. These will also tear your quads up. So you hear about people having like, their quads are destroyed during the Boston Marathon. Uh, it's from the downhill parts of the, that undulating, those undulating hills, just the constant downwards force and your quads are the thing that's kind of breaking you going forwards or going downwards. Your quads kind of stop that. So it's, yeah, so just be prepared if you do like a, a tempo run and then your uphill sprints and then downhill sprints, your legs will be sore for a bit of time afterwards. Okay, so those were 
some hill intervals. So the key with those is to have a long hill. So this hill's like 350 meters ish. So long enough to where you can put in like 40, 50 seconds of um, of some fast, some fast running all uphill. You might have to search a little bit to find something. The grade on this varies. So I think it goes like 10%, 5%, 15% or something. Not tremendously important. The important thing is that the hill's long uh, enough for you to be able to just kind of just book it the whole time. And so to turn this into a workout versus reps, you basically just keep moving. So I should be running right now, but I'm not because I have this camera in my hands. So you keep moving and then you take an equal rest as you ran. So if you're running for 30 or 40 seconds hard, you try to take that same amount of rest, 30, 40 seconds or less. Uh, and you continuously keep moving. What that's gonna do is turn this into like a VO2 max kind of workout. And these are fantastic because this is more, this is definitely like a workout. The cardiovascular adaptations are awesome. Like it puts a tremendous amount of stress on the left ventricle of your heart because it has to pump extra hard because you're going uphill. Like there's like more gravity to kind of fight against and you're pushing up and it's like, so really, really good heart adaptation. Doing VO2 max intervals, basically uphill. Fantastic for you. What's cool about these two is that they're they're, um, they're a little bit like lower force impact because you're going uphill. It's like less downwards force. So it's actually a little bit safer, I guess you could say, to sprint going uphill than it is going on level ground. So these are really fun for that. Uh, just to be forewarned though, these are extremely difficult. It's, it'll be a tough workout. So you might be wondering, well, if you sprint all the way up to the top and it takes you 30, 40 seconds, if you jog 30, 40 seconds down, then you're gonna like have less distance to go, like you'll kind of run into the top quicker. So what I do on a hill like this is, since it's like cut into three different chunks, I'll turn around. So I'll go up, to, I'll go up a chunk, and then I'll I'll take a jog break, turn around, and then go back up. Like you can kind of like extend the length that you're running, that you're doing the full doing the full rep. And then when I do get to the very top, I'll do a longer, maybe two or three minute jog back down to the bottom here, and I'll start again. I might do four or five sets of that or something. The key is to just keep moving. So continuously keep moving. Don't stop and take less rest uh, than you're working or equal rest. So basically as you're doing these, the more rest you take, the more it becomes like a speed or power uh, muscle kind of workout. And the less rest you take, the more it becomes like an endurance kind of workout. So just kind of think of it like that. Obviously the less rest you take, the harder you'll be able to run, which is fine. We're not training muscle power or force really with these. The, the main focus is the, the cardiovascular stress. I think like doing these like 80% intensity. Uh, I saw a video with Ryan Hall one time and he was like, yeah, I live at uh, I live at altitude, and uh, I do like uphill uh, four mile tempo runs. What I've traditionally done in the past is say run six to nine miles, where I'm climbing maybe up a mountain or uh, up a hill that just climbs and climbs and climbs relentlessly. Uh, maybe I'll climb two thousand feet in these runs. I'm like, what? Like, what? that's another way you can do a workout on a hill. Basically, find a hill or more or less a mountain that you can run up continuously for for a long period of time, like 20 minutes. And basically you just kind of lock into an intensity or an effort that you're going for. So if you're like, I wanna do a tempo run, but up a hill, then you try and fight, you try and feel what that tempo pace is. And then you'd kind of maintain that as you're going up the hill. I don't know if you guys have ever run uphill at altitude, but it totally sucks. So I don't know what that whole thing is about. But then again, he is Ryan Hall. There you go. Some modifications to think about when you're doing these hill runs. You can do bounds instead of runs. These are gonna really target like strengthening the quads and the muscles. Basically slow down the movement of running and try and do it as slow as possible. The slower you go, the harder it's gonna be. Do those up a hill like this. You'll feel it after, after like one or two reps. Promise. Okay, the last thing, the third branch, using hills to prep for a specific race that's coming up. Because if you're an ultra runner, because if you're running something like Boston, or you, there's a course that you're gonna do where you know there's gonna be hills, you need to get used to running on hills, up and down the hills very efficiently so you're not wasting energy. Personally, what I would do, I would pick one day out of the week where you're doing like a nice steady, steady run, medium effort, and change the route up a little bit to where you're kind of taking yourself into a course with hills. So something like this. Yeah, so like what I would do is, let's say, I, you know, it's two miles to get out here to this hill, which it is. And then I would just kind of run around this little hill area for 40 minutes. I go up and I go down and I wouldn't do any kind of hard, 
like hard, easy, hard, easy, hard, easy. I would just try and keep the effort and intensity more or less the same. I would just be incorporating hills into it. Come up here, go up, go around, and then go down, they can come back. I actually have to go, I have to go to work. So I'm gonna finish this in a little bit. Okay, so just to summarize, because workout Jake from the past is not very good at being concise. Point number one, if you're doing hill runs for mechanics, have short periods of high intensity exercise, 10 to 15 seconds max effort, followed by long periods of rest, more than three minutes. Downhill runs are a great addition to add, just be careful, don't go too steep, and just kind of relax into the hill, let gravity take you down. Point number two, if you're doing hill runs as a workout, the difference is gonna be you're gonna have a shorter rest. So try and have equal rest to work ratio. So if you're running for two minutes, have a two minute jog recovery or less, and then you kind of continue in that fashion. Point number three, which I kind of grazed over, if you're prepping for a race and it's got a lot of hills or it's an ultra marathon, it's gonna be up a mountain, honestly, the best thing to do to prep for that race is to run the race course maybe a few times before you do the race. That's the best way to prepare for it. But obviously this isn't going to be available for everybody. So what you could do is maybe on one or two runs a week, find a hilly area that you kind of like tool around in, going at a decent clip, just to get used to going up and down hills so that you personally maybe feel a little more confident uh, when you get to the hill sections of your race. And then also your body will kind of learn how to go up a little more efficiently and go down a little more efficiently. So hills are a great tool to have in your running toolbox. Something you should try to touch on at least once every couple weeks. Like I said, they promote good mechanics and good cardiovascular benefits, but they're also kind of fun to do and they can help break up the monotony of your normal, usual running around and stuff. Chances are if you're running a race, you're gonna have a hill in it at some point unless you're running in the track, but even then these can help with acceleration on flatland like we talked about. And they can even take the place of doing like lower body training like squats and stuff, which not everyone likes to do. And yeah, um, wait a second, where the, where, where am I? What am I? This isn't... Oh my god, I'm in. Okay, so that is my video on hill runs. Hopefully I covered pretty much everything we could think of for hills. I covered the mechanics, I covered the workouts, I covered like how to use it kind of to get ready for a race. Hills are fantastic. They're like one of my favorite things to do. Um, you don't have to go to the gym. You can just pretty much do them anywhere. There's a hill. They're free, they're fun. And then when you finish, you're like, oh, hill. Cause you just like ran, like you conquered it with like your feet and stuff. Also, usually at the top of a hill, there's a very nice view.